the way the pepper and moth simulation works under the hood. In the code, the basic idea is that we have an array of this moth class. And that's a piece of code that has the x position, the y position, the color of all the moths. And that happens actually down here towards the bottom. So here is the moth class. It has an age, for example. So in the simulation, if it's two or three years of age, it's allowed to reproduce. They have an alive or dead Boolean variable so that I can actually kind of reuse moths, which is a weird thing as far as biology is concerned, but it actually makes sense from code. When you first create your moths, that's what these two possibilities are. And then down here is where I actually draw it. And yes, indeed, I actually figure out the x and y coordinates of every point to draw the left wing, the right wing, and the body. The basic idea of the simulation itself is I do some setup for keeping track of data. So I actually am creating a table of all of those values, the total population, pollution, the total number of light, medium, and dark moths, all of that. Each step of the simulation happens here in the draw event. So I go through one particular time step, I update all the moths, and I add one to the number of the time step. And then I change the pollution level. I draw the background, and if I am actually on one of the steps that requires data collection, I actually collect the data. And then below here, I just draw everything. So I draw all the steps, the pollution, and all of the data tables. Once I've actually updated all the data tables, then I just go to the next step. For updating the moths, I check to see if they're alive. Then I check to see if they need to create moths. They will create two moths if they are of breeding age. This is asexual reproduction, which I guess only really happens in computer. There is a chance that they will die if their color is too far off from the background color. And also, sometimes they just die because, you know, disease, children, etymologists, whatever it is. If they are still alive, then we update the totals based on that. And as far as creating a moth, it checks to see if they have a mutation. So if, if they actually do mutate, then it checks to see what color they need to change into. And it's based on its parent's color. Then we basically pick a new random direction away and create the new moth based on that x and y position. So it's all based on the parent. If this seems like interesting stuff to you, you should take a look at computer science. This kind of coding is the sort of thing that is used in all sorts of different disciplines. You should try a computer science or an engineering class.